What's happening, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian Mello with Marty's Buick GMC and Chevrolet. And in today's video, we'll be discussing the highly anticipated 2022 Chevy Silverado ZR2. Let's get into it. So unless you've been asleep since the end of February, you've probably seen or heard the news about Chevrolet's answer to the Ford Raptor and Ram TRX, that being the 2022 Silverado ZR2. Autoblog, GM Authority, GM Truck Form, and pretty much every other automotive page on the internet were abuzz when these leaked spy photos that you see here of what we believe is the Silverado ZR2 hit around like February 25th. But the question is, what exactly do these photos tell us and what exactly do we know so far? Now, as reported by GM Authority, although much of the 2022 Chevy Silverado ZR2 prototype's design is hidden under heavy camouflage, there are still some interesting details worth pointing out. The front end, for example, looks to offer greater ground clearance and an improved approach angle over the more pedestrian Silverado Trail Boss, thus padding the ZR2's off-road credentials. The front bumper is reshaped with a higher cutoff point, while a sturdy front skid plate is equipped to help protect the greasy bits underneath. The ZR2 bumper also removes the lower air dam. Further noteworthy features in the lower bumper include a set of red tow hooks. No shock there. Interestingly, the camo covering the hood on this 2022 Chevy Silverado ZR2 prototype appears to be quite a bit taller than previous Silverado prototypes. Although this might simply be the result of wind turbulence getting between the hood and the camo, it's also possible GM is hiding a prominent hood bulge that adds even more visual aggression. I'm going to go ahead and say that it's probably not wind. It looks like it's a pretty aggressive hood. Now, rumor has it that the General is working to develop a new supercharger package for its latest next-generation SUVs. With that in mind, perhaps the camo is actually hiding an elevated hood element, housing a new blower to up output on the upcoming Silverado ZR2 to more extreme levels. Final details for this 2022 Chevy Silverado ZR2 prototype include new lighting elements, which are once again hidden under heavy camo covers. Now, this all sounds pretty good, right? I mean, I know I'm not the only one uh, that's been kicking and screaming, waiting for GM to build a real competitor to the Raptor, because let's be honest, uh, the Reaper truck was not that. Uh, we can assume that the truck will get ZR2's front and rear lockers, along with the DSSV Multimatic Suspension System. But the thing that's on everyone's mind right now is, of course, power. <laughs> We're pretty much in a power uh, struggle here in the in the off-road super truck segment. So this is, of course, what everyone's curious about. Now, if this is, in fact, a competitor to the Raptor and the TRX, what the heck is GM going to put under the hood? Now, the Ram TRX, for those that don't know, is powered by a 6.2-liter supercharged V8 producing 702 horsepower and 650 pound-feet of torque. Now... That sounds great, but the new Ford Raptor R is expected to play host to the Shelby GT500's 760 horsepower Predator supercharged 5.2 liter V8. So what is GM to do? First, I need to be a bit of a buzzkill, but bear with me because at the end, it's not all bad. Now, as far as the rumors about GM working to develop a new supercharger for their latest generation of SUVs and thinking that's going to be the play... I have to be honest, I'm hesitant to put too much weight on that idea. Now, let me explain, because that's mainly because of GM's massive push into the EV space. Literally every call I've been on in the last six months at work has been about EV, GM's push for EVs, uh, GM's goal of going all EV. It, it literally seems to be all they care about. So to me, it just doesn't seem like it would make that much sense from a business point of view to, to spend any more money developing a brand new system that would they would then plan to phase out since they've already said they want to go all EV. They can already utilize what they already have. Now, here is the fun part. Now, I'm no engineer, but I can't imagine that it would take much money or effort to simply drop the 755 horsepower supercharged LT5 from the Corvette ZR1 into the Silverado ZR, ZR2. Now, just thinking about that from a marketing standpoint, it would make a lot of sense to me. I mean, really think about this for a minute. A ZR1 powered Silverado in a battle against a Shelby powered Raptor and a Hellcat powered TRX. 
The Chevy fan base would be ecstatic. It's literally a scenario that the automotive, like, like automotive dreams are made of. Like, I can't think of something more fun. It's been a long time since like a, a, an automotive battle like this has come about. And I think this would be a good one. Now, Personally, I've been confused as to why GM didn't jump on this move way back when the C7Z06 first launched. And if you're watching this video, you're probably in the same boat. In fact, in 2017, when I went to SEMA, Chevy Performance actually brought a supercharged Silverado to the show. And although it was only a 5.3 liter with a modified supercharger from the LT4, it still put down 455 horsepower. So I, I was thinking they were testing the waters there and you know maybe we were going to get a factory supercharged Silverado. There was like a glimmer of hope that it was going to be ha happening, but let's all be honest, all we're interested in is a forced induction 6.2 at this point. I think, I think we can all agree on that. Let me know in the comments if we agree on that. Another possible scenario, though less likely, however, this would be great, is that GM levels up its partnership with SVE. Yanko sound familiar, anyone? For more than 25 years, Specialty Vehicle Engineering, formerly called SLP, has been a second stage vehicle manufacturer and tier one supplier to GM and its dealers. Having built over 65,000 cars, trucks, and SUVs makes them the number one GM specialty vehicle manufacturer in the USA. SVE is the company behind the 800 horsepower supercharged Yanko Silverado. Yes, that's a thing, an 800 horsepower Yanko Silverado. I should probably make a video on that, right? <laughs> the Yanko Silverado features a blueprinted LT1 aluminum block, forged internals, CNC ported LT1 cylinder heads, and a centrifugal supercharger assembly. Imagine the power move if GM was able to look at these 700 horsepower trucks by Ford and Ram, sit back, laugh, and say, hold my beer. Now, of course, all of this is rumor, speculation, and fanboy dreams at this point. We don't know what is going to be under the hood of this truck, and realistically, we don't necessarily know without a shadow of a doubt that it's going to be a ZR2, but it seems highly likely at this point. My only hopes is that GM doesn't just hand over another 6.2 liter NA pickup with some cool bodywork, better suspension, and call it a day because that's just not going to cut it. There's no one's going to buy that over, I mean, people are going to buy it, but they're not going to buy it over uh, the Raptor and the TRX. It's just not going to be a competitor in, the, in that space. The last thing I'm going to leave you all with is this ZR2 render that was released last week by Jackie Zahn, a designer who's been with GM for over six years. Could this be what we can expect to see when the camo comes off and we see the official reveal? Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on the new 2022 Silverado ZR2. What do you think will be under the hood? And is it something you'd be interested in spending your hard-earned Benjamins on? What would it require? I mean, 500 horsepower, would that do it for you? 600 horsepower, has it got to be seven? Or does it have to beat all of them when we were talking 800? Let me know. I, personally, I'd be happy in the 700 horsepower range. And, you know, with what Ford and, and Ram are doing, I think that's pretty much where they're going to have to be. As always, I thank you all for watching. Please consider supporting my channel by liking and subscribing. It really does honestly help me out. And be sure to check out some of my full video walkarounds and test drive videos. Thanks again, and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.